everybody! Welcome to the Jada and Stitches Show! We've had a lot of requests to make a nice cozy cowl for the cool weather, so that's what we're making today. <laughs> and this is such a cool pattern that I've designed it. You can use whatever super bulky yarn you want, um, and it's a one skein ball. So one ball makes one cowl. And depending on the size of your skein, it's going to determine the size of your overall cowl. So I've made several, as you can tell from the thumbnail, and I'm gonna tell you exactly how many ounces were in each of those balls, and that's how big a um, cowl I ended up getting. Now this one actually was the largest ball, and it was about 100 and, and it was a 170 gram ball of yarn. 170 grams. I didn't even use the whole thing and it's pretty tall. It actually winds up being almost 13 inches tall. I didn't want to make it any bigger than that. I could have kept going, but I didn't want to be like up to here in my cowl. <laughs> and this tucks right into my jacket. The smallest ball of yarn that I used was only 100 grams and that's that pretty gray one that you can see in the thumbnail. And I'll show you that again later. Actually, I have it right here. <laughs> this is the gray cowl. That is a super bulky yarn. It's a, a nice, um, well-wound skein. So it's not fluffy like this one's fluffy. If you get in really close, you can see how fluffy this is. This is a super bulky, fluffy yarn. And you can use this one. It's perfectly simple. Um, but uh, it might be better if you've used bigger, thicker yarn before and you're a little more comfortable. So um, I would start with a big, chunky yarn. If you're going to use a big, bulky yarn, use this one That's it's easier to see your stitches. This one was the smallest skein I got. It was only a hundred ounce skein and I used the entire ball of yarn when I made this and it's perfect. It sits in nice and comfortably underneath my chin. I can roll it underneath my chin a little bit and I can tuck it into my jacket um, lapels like I did this one. So that's the smallest ball. So if you're buying a ball of super bulky yarn for this project, you can go as small as a hundred ounces or I should say a hundred grams, hundred grams. <laughs> Or the biggest one that I found, which was 170 grams, and you probably won't need to use the whole thing. The ball I'm using today is 150 grams, and I probably won't need to use the whole thing, judging by how much of this ball of yarn I had left over at the end. But that's the yarn in a snapshot. I will now take you in to the craft table, because it's getting kind of chilly out here. <laughs> and we're going to make ourselves a nice, cozy, warm cowl using super bulky yarn and a big hook. Ready? Let's go! <laughs> For today's cowl, you are going to need a skein of super bulky yarn. So I'm using, this is a size 6, but it says super bulky on it. Now someone just mentioned to me a little while ago that they may have slightly changed or skewed the yarn size scale, but as long as it's a super bulky, and you can tell by this running over my finger here, it's a pretty thick wound yarn, you want a super bulky skein of yarn in your chosen color and style. It can be nice and um, sort of tightly wound like this, or it can be the super fluffy type like the other ones I've used, but you want a super bulky skein. This is a 150 gram skein, um, so it's going to be slightly bigger than my gray cowl if I use the whole thing. The gray cowl was a 100 gram skein. You want a big hook. This is an 11 and a half millimeter hook. It's gigantic. <laughs> it's also known as a P. That's the letter P as in Peter. And um, you can use a 10 millimeter, maybe even a 9.5 millimeter, possibly a 12 millimeter, somewhere around here. You want a nice big hook um, because the idea is to make a nice big stitch. The bigger your stitches, the more drape your fabric's gonna have. So you wanna have a big hook for this project. You need a pair of scissors and you need a yarn needle that's got a big eye. So here's my special big eye yarn needle. This allows me to thread big pieces of yarn back in on itself. And once you've got all of those things, we can get started. <laughs> to begin our cowl, we want to start with a slip knot. Make sure it fits over your hook and slides around comfortably. It's not too tight or too loose. And it's extra important when using a big hook to make sure that your stitches and your loops are all measured around the widest part of your hook. Not down here, because that will be too small. It won't be the right size and it won't fit over your hook properly. And not in here where you're holding it, because again, it's too small. So you want it to be right here, right around this wide part of the hook. 
we're going to begin by chaining a length. And the length is going to turn into a big circle. So we're going to chain a length and join the first and the last stitches together. And that circle needs to fit comfortably over your head. I have found, using this sized hook with this super bulky yarn, that a beginning chain row of 40 is just enough. So not only does it fit over my head with a few inches to spare, but it sits comfortably around my neck in a big circle. So 40 with this, this hook, if you're using a smaller hook, I would recommend adding between 5 and 10 chains because you want it to be a nice drapey cowl, a nice drapey circle over top of your head. So it can't touch your head when it's going over. No, no tight cowls. <laughs> so 40 with the size 11 and a half millimeter hook and the super bulky yarn. If you're using uh, a smaller hook, add between five and 10 chains to your beginning row. Um, but you can always double check it before we move on once we get to the end of our foundation chain row. 38, 39, and 40. Once you've chained your length, so I have 40 here, but you can have however many you want, try not to twist your foundation chain row. If you're using the super fluffy yarn, it's not as important because you can't really see it. Um, but if you're using this sort of smoother uh, spun yarn like I am, then try not to sort of twist your rows because it makes it easier to work into them. You're going to take your hook and join your entire row so put your hook through your first chain and slip stitch. Find my yarn here. <laughs> there we go. So slip stitch. And then you've got the big circle. Here is where you pause. Take this and put it over your head. If it's a tight fit, you need to add some more chains. If it's loose, it's fine. You don't need to add any more. Um, this should also sit around your neck, sort of falling over your shoulders in a nice loose manner. It shouldn't be tight to your throat because you want a cowl to be comfortable, not tight around your neck. So if it fits over your head with room to spare and sits comfortably around your shoulders, then that is the right size and we can continue. We're going to work in a half double crochet stitch. So if you need help with the half double crochet, you can check out my half double crochet tutorial. I'll put the link in the description box below. But if you're comfortable with it, then we will proceed. We are going to begin row one, so our official row one, with a chain one. We're only going to chain one, and we're going to half double crochet into this very same stitch that we joined in. And as you know, you wrap once, Put your hook through that stitch you want to work, grab your yarn, pull up a loop. So you've got three loops on your hook, that's for a half double crochet. Wrap once more and pull back through all three. So I love the half double crochet, it's kind of like a taller, thicker single crochet. <laughs> and that's what you're going to do into each stitch all the way around. You're going to half double crochet. I like to use the tops of my loops, um, so the, the top two loops in a chain. You see how there's sort of three parts to it? There's this bit, there's the part that really runs into the next chain, and then there's the part that runs underneath. I like to try and use the whole thing, but it doesn't matter. It's entirely up to you. And again, if you're using the super fluffy stuff, then it really doesn't matter because you can't really see, you can't really see the sort of the stitches you're using. So. Just half double crochet into each stitch all the way around. Oops. If you started with 40 chains like I did, then at the end of row one, you should have 40 half double crochets. Um, if you had 45 chains to start, then you should have 45 double, or half double crochets. So the whole idea is that however many chains your foundation chain row was, that is exactly how many stitches you should have at the end of your first row. And a little side note, the first row is always sort of the trickiest. You're working into fiddly little chains, you're trying to establish sort of a pattern, um, you're trying to also get comfortable with the stitch. If you're not used to using a great big hook like this, it's also going to take a little bit of time to get used to because it's, it's gigantic. <laughs> it's not as easy to move around as sort of the smaller hooks that we generally use. 
And also using bigger, chunkier yarn can take a little bit of getting used to too. So take your time with your foundation row. Pause, make sure you're wrapping and you're grabbing the right part of your chain to work into. Make sure when you pull up all your loops that you're, you've got them all pretty much around the chubby part of your hook. And just relax, take your time. Try to make sure that your beginning row is as even as possible, but don't fret because every row after this one is so much easier and so much faster that all of a sudden you'll have a cowl made in no time. So let's just take our time with our first row. We're gonna work half double crochet into each chain all the way around. However many chains your foundation chain row was is exactly how many stitches you should have at the end of your first row. So in my case, I had 40 chains, which means I will have 40 half double crochet at the end of row one. Okay, I've worked every single chain all the way around my foundation chain row. I have 40 half double crochets because I had 40 foundation chains. And counting is a lot easier when you're using a giant hook and big thick yarn. As you can see, there's my chain one to start the row. That doesn't count, it's just to bring my, my sort of work up to the right height. So because I half double crocheted into the same stitches joining, that's my first stitch. And it's easy to count. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. And if you go all the way around, you should have the exact right number of half double crochets per chain. So I have 40. And now I'm going to join up my row. So while we are working in the round, we are, we are joining every single row with a slip stitch. So you take your hook and you're going to join it into the top of that first real stitch. So this right here, there's the chain one. Here's where we're going to join our, our row. And you just slip stitch to join. There we go. And take a moment and pull it on over your head and make sure it sits around your neck in a nice loose manner. If it's too tight, you're gonna have to take it out and add a few more chains, but it's better to do that now than get too far into your cowl and then realize that you've gotta take out even more work. So it's always good to check these things. Just in case when you put in your first row, you were kinda of tight. Um, if you're nice and loose, um, kinda of like this, then, like I say, and if you take your time making your first row, then it should be nice and loose and comfortable. And every row after this is going to be even easier. So if this is perfect and it fits over your head, then we can move on to row two. Row two, we chain one to start. And we're going to half double crochet into the same stitch as joining. From here on out, you wanna make sure you count every single stitch in your row, every row the end of every row, double count your stitches because you wanna make sure you still have 40 or whatever your foundation chain was. Um, you wanna make sure that you've got the same stitch count in every single row because that will keep your round cowl nice and even all the way up. If you're using super fluffy, super bulky yarn, your stitch count is still important, but if you are out one or two, you can really cheat using the fluffy yarn because you just can't see the stitches as clearly as you can when you're using this sort of soft, um, more streamlined and wound yarn. But here we go. We're still half double crocheting. This is a half double crocheted cowl. So every row is going to be half double crocheted all the way up. And once you get all the way back around to the end of row two, we're gonna join up and continue with row three. But I've got a cute little trick that I wanna show you guys at the end of row two. Okay, I have worked a half double crochet into each of the stitches all the way around for row two. I have counted and I have 40. And it's very important to count, why? Because when you get back around to the end, look at this. This looks like a stitch, doesn't it? And it could technically be considered a stitch, but it's not because we want to have the exact same count in every single row. So I'm going to skip over that, join at the top of my first half double crochet 
with a slip stitch and you will not see a gap there. No ma'am. So we're moving into row three and we're going to continue working the same number of stitches into every row. We're using half double crochet, but there's a trick. When you work with this yarn in particular, so the stuff that's sort of neatly spun, not the fluffy stuff, the fluffy stuff it doesn't matter. So if you're using the fluffy yarn, you can completely disregard this tip. But if you're using this stuff, um, and you can see every stitch, you're going to notice that you've got a little bit of a seam starting at the end of every row. If you keep going without doing anything here, your seam's going to go off on this direction. And if you're left-handed, it's going to go off in this direction. And there's a neat little way to avoid having that happen. So every other row, you're going to do this. You're going to slip stitch into the next stitch. So you join with a slip stitch, and you're going to slip stitch into the next stitch, and just start your row from there. And then the next row, you join as normal. The row after that, join and then slip stitch into the next stitch. And what that's going to do is it's just going to create just a slight diagonal so that the back seam of your cowl will literally stay at the back. It won't try to wrap its way around the other side. And then you just kind of continue as normal. You half double crochet, chain one to start your row, half double crochet into the same stitch as joining, in which case it would be this second stitch that we slip stitched into. And then you work your way around and you join with a slip stitch as normal. If that is a little weird sounding, consider it like this. You're zigzagging back and forth, back and forth. One natural round pulls you in one direction. The round after that you have to auto-correct for it. So you're kind of creating a little auto-correct for your own little um, stitch work. If you don't do anything, and it's fine if you don't want to, and if you're using the fluffy yarn you don't have to, but if you don't, you're going to get a seam that runs off in one direction or the other, depending on your handedness. If that doesn't bother you, then don't worry about it. <laughs> but if you're a little on the picky side like me, and you like to have your seam at the back, then you can follow that cute little trick. And I'm just going to stick a picture in here of the gray cowl, so the back of the gray cowl. And if you follow my sort of slip stitch, slip stitch every other row, then you'll get that mostly even uh, seam at the back. And that's just a cute little trick uh, if you want to give that a whirl. So here we go. We're half double crocheting into every stitch all the way around. Make sure you keep counting. You want to have an even number at the end of every row. All right, I've completed my third row and I am going to join regularly. So join. you join every single row with a slip stitch. Regardless of whether you're doing my neat little trick or not, you join every row with a slip stitch and you chain one to begin every row. But if you want to keep things even, so because I did an extra slip stitch in the previous row, I'm not going to do it in this row. I'm just going to chain one to begin my row and start my half double crochet stitch directly into the same row that I just chained one out of, or I should say into the same stitch that I just chained one out of. And I'm going to keep going. And as you can see, my little, my little joining seam is going to be somewhat even all the way up. So this one, normal. I'm going to finish it, I'm going to join with a slip stitch, and then I'm going to slip stitch into the next stitch before I start my next row. So every other row I'm going to do that little trick. Um, but that's just to keep the back straight. Okay, and that's it. From here on out, you are going to half double crochet into every single stitch around. Make sure you always count your stitches at the end of every row to ensure you have the exact same number. Join every row with a slip stitch. Begin every row with a chain one and a half double crochet into the same stitch that you chained one out of. And that is what you're going to keep doing until you run out of yarn. <laughs> and once you've gotten all the way to the end of your skein and you've got your final row finished, I will show you how we're going to finish off our cowls. Okay, I have completed my last row. My cowl is as tall as I want, and just to let you know how many rows it is, I'll count them for you. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 
15 rows high. I didn't completely finish my skein um, because uh, I think this is as tall as I want. And the other way of looking at it is you can grab your measuring tape and just quickly measure it. So this is 11 inches on the nose, so 11 inches tall, and if you consider how tall your neck is, that gives you an extra bit of play. If you want your cowl super cozy, add more rows. Remember, you can also stripe these things, so if you run out of one ball, you can add another one. Um, but if this is as tall as you want, then you're done, and all you want to do is snip your yarn. Remember, we're dealing with thicker yarn, so give yourself a slightly longer tail than you normally would. And fastening off is the same as any other uh, project. You just grab it, pull it through the loop that was on your hook all the way, pull it nice and tight, grab your yarn needle, and I like to first pull it to the back, just to get it into the back, and then you want to weave your yarn back and forth through the back side of some of the stitches that you made. Um, so when I say back and forth, I mean you, so you pull it through the first set of stitches, turn your work around, see how it's come out after the second set of stitches right here? I'm going to go over top of the last one and then back through the same set and maybe the other direction a few. There we go. Make sure you don't pull it too tight. So hang on to that last little thing. There we go. So you don't want to you don't want to tighten up your last row. And that way it shouldn't un undo on you. So if you've woven it back and forth, even just once or twice, it should stay in place, and that's even if you give it a good wash um, or a lot of wearing. So make sure you put in both of your tails, and uh, you're done. <laughs> and there is your completed cowl. Here's the back, and just to kind of reiterate what I was talking about, you can sort of see my closing seam, and if this is something you like to be picky about, then you can use my little trick. So you join every row with a slip stitch, and you chain one, half double crochet in the same place to start. Every other row, you slip stitch to join your row, slip stitch into the next stitch, then chain one and half double crochet to start. So every other row, you do an extra slip stitch before you chain one and half double crochet. And that will just keep that funny little um, join stitch kind of sitting on top of each other. And I mean, you can really barely see it. And if you're using the super fluffy stuff, you won't see it at all. So you don't even need to use that trick. But it's just a little tiny detail that you can employ in your crochet if that's something that kind of irks you. Um, and like I said, you may not even see it at all. So if it's not something you worry about, don't worry at all. It's just something to keep all of your joins at the back. But that is a one ball cowl. <laughs> <laughs> I think I really like this green one. Um, I didn't use the entire skein for this particular cowl and look how nicely it fits me. It tucks into my jacket, which has got sort of a, a lower lapel, like a little v-neck, and it still gives me enough to cuddle up into my ears and roll down underneath my chin. So I'm particularly pleased with this. And this is what uh, a cowl not made in the fluffy yarn looks like, but they're both super bulky, so you can use either or. Just make sure you use your gigantic hook and uh, your patience, because using a big hook and fluffy yarn can be um, a little more trying than the typical stuff that we do here at the Jade and Stitches Show. So thank you so much for tuning in everyone. Remember, you can follow me on Google Plus where you can post pictures of the finished projects you do and Instagram. Um, I love looking at everybody's stuff there as well. Plus, I'm on Pinterest, also at Jada and Stitches, and you can post pictures there, you can look at new boards that I'm making and uh, get lots of different inspiration for projects of your own. And I'm also uh, at my Etsy shop. You can 
give me little messages, you can send me pictures, and we really appreciate your support. Every time you pop in and buy a pattern from us on the Etsy, the Etsy shop, um, you're helping us keep going here at the Jaden Stitches Show. It gives us a chance to buy more yarn and spend more time making videos that uh, we have so much fun doing and bringing them to you guys every week. Um, and if you can't read patterns or you're still a little uncomfortable with that, then we also have a tip jar on our website. And there's the link to our website right there. You can pop over there and drop a little tip in our tip jar and that also helps us a lot as well. And we thank you so much for your support. Remember to tell your friends about the Jade and Stitches show, subscribe, thumbs up our videos and come back every week to see what we are stitching up. <laughs> we will see you again really soon, everybody. Thanks so much for coming. Bye.